Okay, so we are going to look at an example now. And the complicated thing about this example, the thing that's going to make this example sort of more interesting than the previous one, is that we no longer know u along the x-axis. We know it along, you know, this line, um, x, 5x. So we know that u of x, 5x is equal to e to the x. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I want to draw out the curve. I want to sketch the curve on which we know what u is. So actually, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an x and y axis. Well, great job there once again. Easy. There we go. Okay, x, 5x. Okay, so I want the line where, you know, x of s is equal to, to, to x. And so the x coordinate is equal to x and the y coordinate is equal to 5x. So in other words, this is just y is equal to 5x. So I'm going to draw that line now. So um, y is equal to 5x. It's going to be this line right here. So this is the line y is equal to 5x. Okay. And our characteristics are going to start from this line. So our characteristics are not going to start from the x-axis. They're going to start from this line. Okay, so x of s, again, x of s, or sorry, x dot of s is always going to be equal. Uh, x dot of s is always going to be equal to the thing multiplying the x derivative of u. So that's 4. y of s is always going to be the thing multiplying the y derivative of u. So that's minus 3. x of 0, I'm just going to put x naught. And then y of zero needs to be the corresponding, the point on the line on this on this curve, this y equals 5x curve, this Cauchy data curve corresponding to x naught. So here, this would just be 5x naught. Okay, z dot of s, remember in the previous video, we saw that this right here, this part is always going to be kind of the z dot of s. And so this says z dot of s is equal to zero. And z of zero is going to be equal. Well, again, let me just do a little scratch work down here. z of zero is always going to be equal to u of x naught, y naught. y naught is 5x naught. And this is equal to e to the x naught. So z of zero then is equal to e to the x naught. Okay, and just as before, this is a system of ordinary differential equations because you know s is the only independent variable. So this is a system of ordinary differential equations. Um, and just like before, we can solve them pretty easily. We're gonna get x of s is equal to 4s plus x naught. Y of s is gonna be equal to minus 3s plus 5x naught. Okay, so if I just think about a generic plane, a generic point in the plane here, this is the point A, B. Okay, so notice the slope is going to be negative. So let me actually get a different, just so I can draw it a little bit better. Um, this is a generic point uh, A, B, and the slope is gonna be minus three over four. So one, uh, yeah, minus three over four. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, like this. And it's just going to be a line like this. Okay, so now what's going on here? Well, if I solve the Z equation, I'm going to get, notice z dot of zero, z dot is equal to zero. So this means z of s is just equal to e to the x naught. So in other words, if I think about uh, a curve starting here, this is, this is the beginning point where s is equal to zero. As s increases, it's going to go along this curve in that direction. And along that curve, uh, z of s is going to be equal to e to the x naught. 
but d of s is just equal to u along that curve. So if I start here, u of this point right here, which is I'll call x naught five x naught, u of u of x naught five x naught is equal to e to the x naught. And then as you move along this curve here, it stays constant because the derivative of, of z is constant there, or the derivative of u is constant there along that curve. Okay, so u of ab, again, u uh, ab is just a generic point in the plane. So this tells us that u of ab is going to equal to e to the x naught. Well, again, I have to write x naught in terms of a and b. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to solve this system of equations. I'm going to have a is equal to 4s plus x naught. And b is going to be equal to minus 3s plus 5x naught. Okay, so this is a, a system of linear equations. Uh, S and X naught are the unknown things. A and B is the generic point in the plane, so we're not solving for A and B. Given an A and B, we're solving for the X naught and the S. So I'm going to do that on this page here. So again, this is a system of two linear equations. Solve it using whatever method you want to. I'm going to begin by multiplying the first equation by 5 and subtracting it from the second equation. So this is going to give me B minus 5a is equal to minus 3s minus 20s and then 5x naught minus x naught is going to be equal to zero so this is equal to minus 23s so then this gives b minus 5a over minus 23 is equal to s okay now I want to know what S is. So I'm going to take my value for S, or I want to know what X naught is. So I'll just plug this value for S in my top equation. This gives me A is equal to 5A minus B over 23 times 4 plus X naught. So now I just want to solve this for X naught. So this tells me X naught is equal to A minus, okay, um, so this is 23, a minus 4 over 23, 5a minus b is equal to x naught. Okay, so let me go back to the previous problem, the previous page, I mean. So this is going to be equal to e, and instead of writing e, I'm going to write exp, which is, just means e to the power of whatever is going to go in here, uh, and that is a... minus 4 over 23 oops, uh, times 5a minus b. Okay, and so what's going to happen here when I get a common denominator, I want to kind of combine this. I get a common denominator. This is 23a over 23 minus 20a. So that's going to be 3a plus 4b over 23. Okay, or in terms of x and y, this is going to be u of xy is equal to e to the power of 3x plus 4y over 23. Okay, and I actually want to show that this does satisfy the PDE and, and the condition, the uh, the Cauchy condition. So again, our solution is U of XY. I'm going to write it as E this time. Uh, what, what is it? 3X plus 4Y. 3X plus 4Y over 23. Um, I'm going to be taking derivatives, so maybe it's a little bit easier to think of this as e to the 3x over 23, e to the 4y over 23. And I forget already what the PDE is. It's okay. So I'm going to do 4 times the derivative of u with respect to x, which is going to be 3 over 23 times e to the 3x 
plus 4y over 23 minus 3 times the derivative of u with respect to y. So this is minus 3 uh, times 4 over 23 times e to the 3x plus 4y over 23. Okay, so notice what's going to happen here. I've got 4 times 3, so this is 12 over 23. And notice this right here, that and that are the same. It's just equal to u. So this is equal to u. And then over here, it's going to be minus 12 over 23 times again u. So this, what I'm saying is this is just equal to u. This is just equal to u. It's not important that it's equal to u, but it is important that they're equal to the same thing. Uh, and this is equal to zero. Okay, so it solves the, it satisfies the PDE. Let's make sure it satisfies the Cauchy condition. So if I look at u of x, 5x, what this means is wherever I see an x, I'm going to put an x. Wherever I see a y, I'm going to put a 5x. So this is e to the 3x plus 4 times 5x divided by 23. So this is e. Okay, so this is going to be uh, 3x plus 20x. So this is 23x over 23 which is just equal to e to the x. And so it also satisfies that Cauchy condition as well, which says that u of x 5x needs to be equal to e to the power of x. Okay, so that's it. Again, set things up this way, sort of think through things systematically, um, and that's how we're going to do these problems.